Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back today. We have Ross with us. I'm super excited to have him on. I can't wait for him to share with you where he's come from, where he is, and where he's going. So, Ross, take, take a second to say hello to everyone. Hi, Tony. I'm glad, so, so uh, grateful to be here with you today and, and uh, ask your, answer your questions and tell everybody what's going on. Great. So let's dive right into it. So, this, to, you know, as you know, the theme of the show is top 10 with Tony. And I have these 10 questions that I rapid fire through. And I'll start off with the first question. What's your one word open uh, that you could use to describe how you're feeling right now? I'm feeling Zen, Tony. Zen. I love it. <laughs> hmm, you'll have to tie. OK, let's go to question number two. Tell me about your business. So just tell me about how you got started, what it's all about and all that good stuff. Yeah, I mean, Zen business is is really the one liner is we like to talk about us as we are the Shopify for the service industry. So everything that a service solopreneur needs to start, run and grow their business all in one spot. We're that one one stop shop for solopreneur businesses. The way it got started is, you know, I'm 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 an entrepreneur myself, 30 plus years in the entrepreneur business and really saw a need that needed to be filled for this oncoming, you know, economic wave that's been accelerated by the pandemic and COVID, you know, more and more people are going out on their own and starting their own business. And service business is the biggest segment in the U.S. economy and in the global economy. So we're focused really on service folks. Got it. Now let's talk about some wins. Tell us about a recent W that you were able to put on the board, so to speak, that's important to you, that's dear to you, and what you learned from it. So our audience can kind of get some value there as well. Yeah, I, Tony, you know, we we have recent, to date, we have started 80,000 businesses. So every day when I come in, you know, I think about our customers and getting them formed up and running making them successful as a small business. I mean, this is a big deal for solopreneurs. You don't know what to do. You don't know in what sequence to do. You, you know, you don't want to go out and have to research the 10 or 15 different vertical solutions. You want to be able to just come to one spot. And so what gets us excited, and I, I hope it doesn't sound uh, too self-serving, is that, you know, we're here to make customers successful. And to date, we've done 80,000 and continues to grow. We have uh, just closed a big round of funding led by Cathay Innovations, a $55 million round of funding, which is really an indication of the explosive growth that we've seen and the success we've seen. There's just a huge market out here and a huge need to help all of these folks starting up their first time businesses. That's really wonderful. And congratulations on your recent round. I think what you offer is going to help a lot of businesses and a lot of people. And, you know, I think you're, you're on a bigger mission and your why sounds really powerful. So that's really, that's really great. Let's talk about failures. I know we don't like to talk about failures and, but we all learn from them, right? Some of us, you know, not to mention any names, take longer to learn from failures. You know, I try to learn once, not twice, but but tell us, share with our audience, uh, you know, if, you know, biggest failure you've had recently and what you learned from it. Yeah, I mean, I think it was, it was, you know, I'm a big believer in, in feedback, not failure. So, you know, the strongest feedback we've had probably was early on in, in our evolution. We thought, hey, we'll go out and acquire customers with a mobile application and we'll give them uh, updates on the status of their formation of, of their LLC. And I will tell you, it was a complete flop, you know, and what it really taught us is that, you know, we, we thought it was a neat idea and no one cared. <laughs> so, you know, it really focused us, which was already inherent in the company, but it really focused us on testing. So we do a tremendous amount of product market research, surveying our customers, interviews, Google design sprints. I mean, we just, we never want to ever again build something that no one wants to buy. And, you know, I started out my career as a uh, software engineer and went through a CTO. And now I've went over to the dark side. I'm a CEO 
now and I've spent most of my career building software that most people don't want to buy. I mean, I think it's part of the, the software industry. And so we just spend a bunch of effort on making sure that what we uh, offer to our customers is something that they want and need. So it wasn't a, a huge a bit of feedback, but it was enough of a feedback to, as you said, you know, I used, I, I needed a quick reminder. So it was a, it was a reminder, you know, maybe we should ask people if they actually want this. Right. And, and the only person that, that comes to mind when you say that is Steve Jobs. He, we, 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 you know, we didn't know we needed iPhones, but he knew he went and he was successful at it. But that's great that you actually went with it. Uh, you went forth and you, you launched it and you tested it because there's a lot of things that, you know, I, I, I've I always said a whiteboard is a great place for things to go die. You put on the whiteboard, you never implement it. And sometimes every once in a while you put on the whiteboard, it gets implemented, but at least you tested it, you took it to market and you found out, hey, it, you know, it's not for your clientele. When yeah, they're I mean, it, it, you, really, are you still it really caused us to do a, a major pivot you know, as far as how we acquired customers and it, which is the foundation of the company today. So we treated it as feedback and, uh, you know, it wasn't a, a huge investment, but it, but it was a, you know, a, a blatant, no one wanted it. So it was really caused us to refocus the company, which was great. That's what it's supposed to do. Now, when people incorporate, just as a side note, are people doing the rush service and you still have to FedEx them their articles and stuff and their filing or is it all digital now? Just so I know. It's, all, it's all digital. It's all digital. I mean, our whole segment's all digital. We do that for cost. We have a great digital platform. They can see everything online. We've got a digital dashboard. Everything happens faster. They can still do rush service where we do the filings and get them back to them uh, quickly, sometimes within hours, uh, but it's all online. Okay. A lot of the entrepreneurs I talk to, they quickly, I mean, it's always about go to market quick and it's going to be 12 months, but when they want to incorporate, they want to do it quick and expedite and they all pay that expedite fee. I would just thought, I, if you don't know this, that's fine, but at a ballpark, uh, you know, tell us Ross, like what percentage of all the new deals that you put together, what percentage are expedited or requesting to be expedited? Well, Tony, we, we offer our services in packages, in bundles, like a lot of other online SaaS-based services. So depending on which bundle you buy, you know, some of them have standard processing time, some of them have, you know, expedited and some of them even super expedited. Uh, so you can, you can pick and choose what you want. You know, in general, it's around 30%. You know, there's more there's more that 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 pay for the the super expedited, but we, you know, you get to the, what's in the bundles is what a customer needs to get up and running. All of our services pretty darn quick, I will tell you. You know, because it's online, it happens within uh, days. Sometimes the within weeks, depending on the state. Sometimes states are the hold up, not us. So true. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Let's move on to your on your favorite online business tool. Can you share with the audience what that is for you right now? Well, I think it's everybody's favorite online business tool, especially the investors is, is Slack. I mean, we completely run our business with Slack and, and, you know, with the recent announcement from Salesforce, um, uh, you know, it's just a, a fantastic tool. And I think the, the other one is, you know, we run our business also on the Google suite of products. So, you know, Slack and Google suites is one of our favorite tools that, you know, powers our business on a daily basis. Excellent. Let's talk about business expenses. Can you share with us what is your largest or number one business expense that you have right now, Ross? Well, it's going to be our people. It's our team. And that's always been, you know, the case for any startup is, you know, it's the staff, it's the, the people uh, make the company and that's where your biggest investment is in. You know, when COVID hit, uh, you know, like everybody, we were panicked. The, when it hit, no one knew what to do. Our traffic was stable, but our conversions were down about 30% for uh, three to four weeks. And then they just really took off after everyone calmed down. 
during that time, you know, what we did is we said, hey, we're not laying anybody off. We cut expenses, we cut bonuses, we cut raises and kept everybody in the company. That was a commitment. They had gotten us where we had got so far. So we, we continued to commit to them. They're all still here at the company and, you know, we're doing better than ever. It's always our biggest expense and, and we're happy to have it as our business expense. Our, our team makes up our company. Absolutely. Having the right people on your team, having the right people on the bus, you know, the, it's so important because those are the people like, you know, the book that we've all read, you know, culture crushes strategy for breakfast or, or something like that. You know, it's your people and it starts with the culture and it sounds like you're a great leader and you got good things going on. And in the context of business expenses, I have to ask because I'm in the credit card business, credit card processing payments. So where would you rate, would you say that payment processing is a top five expenses for your organization? No, I wouldn't put it at the top five for our, for our organization. Got it. Let's go on to best resources for attracting and signing on new clients. What's your best resources you're using today to get high value clients? Well, we do, we spend a lot on uh, SEO, uh, you know, search engine optimization. So that's a big, big area where we focus on it, it comes with kind of my background coming from the, one of the founders at, at HomeAway. HomeAway was a top 10 organic search company uh, when I was there. So organic search is a big, big part of what we do. Uh, we're also a public benefits corporation. So we promote, you know, us as a public benefits corporation, not only to attract uh, employees or team members, but also to attract uh, new customers. Everyone loves the message that, you know, we're more than just a bunch of bloodthirsty capitalists. We're out here to save the world. And, and that is our mission is definitely to save the world one, one uh, business at a time. Um, that's really is organic. We do some PPC also, obviously via all the search engines. But it's also, we have a big word of mouth. We have a high, super high MPS super high on reviews. So there's a lot of uh, referral business and repeat. Yeah. That's great. You're doing a lot of things right. With the number 80,000, you're doing a lot of things properly. So that's great to hear. Uh, let's talk about, um, you know, what's the one question, Ross, that you wish people would ask you? So when you're up there giving presentations, keynotes, talking to your team or one-on-ones or investors, when you're in front of them, and there's a Q and A section, or you know, people line up to ask you questions. What's that one question that you wish people would ask you, and they never ask you in business context? Yeah, Tony, that's a great question. <laughs> that's a great question. Um, ironically, uh, you know, for me, it's it, it's always it's the question I ask when I'm in it, people is I really want to understand what is the difference that makes the difference? What is it that you think uh, makes the company successful? Um, you know, the, the original thought or the original question or the existential question. And for us, it's, you know, it's the product, it's the service that we deliver to the customer. I think that uh, you have to focus on that first as, you know, do people want what you you're selling and what value does it bring to the world? That's kind of the, you know, you can't lie to your customers. And so what is the, what's the truth that you're bringing to your customers and why is it that they use your product or service? I think that's, to me, that's always the, the core of any um, business or any endeavor is, you know, what's that value you're bringing all the other, we spend so much time on the details and the, and the, you know, the craft and the strategy and the tactics, which are all very important that, that come with experience. You know, you can't just uh, wade into this and hope it all works out. But at the end of the day, you really have to deliver value. And, um, you know, you're, that, that gets expressed in customers wanting your product and, and using it. That is really powerful. And thank you for sharing that with us. Now, let our listeners know how they could get a hold of you, how they could connect with you, your website address, your Twitter handle, however they could 
find out more information, you know, if they have any questions about this interview or more, you know, more questions about how exactly you help people, uh, if you can share that with us, that'd be great. Well, they can always come to zenbusiness.com uh, to get our products and service, or they can send me an email at ross at zenbusiness.com or on LinkedIn. Uh, also, just uh, search for Ross Burdorf at, uh, uh, for LinkedIn. Excellent. Thank you. So here we are at the, at the final question. What is your one word close? Business. I love it. So we started with Zen as your one word opener, business at the end. Beautiful. I love it. Well, thank there you. you have it, folks. There's Ross. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming on to the show. It was really a pleasure to have you. I can't wait to have you on here again and talk about other wins that you're, you have much more to come in 2021 for all of us. And especially you, you're on to a big, uh, you're creating a bigger future. So that's really great. So once again, on behalf of my, on behalf of my, our listeners and myself, thank you very much for coming on here and uh, have a great rest of your week. Well, thank you, Tony. I, I'm uh, thank, thankful for being, being invited. Of course.